Hello, thanks for accepting our invitation. Please would like you to share your story, tell us your ND stories, how it happened. Yeah, thank you. So in 2010, I was at this party. And to kind of make a long story short, I had a near-death experience. And okay, I'm just gonna introduce myself kind of so you know me. Before this happened, I went to church maybe a few times, you know, when I was younger. Um, you know, I was kind of connected to believing, you know, maybe there was something. I, I don't know. You know, this book says there is, this church says there is. People say there's something else besides us, but for the most part, um, you just kind of never know, you know. And uh, so. What happened was on February 20th, 2010, I uh, was at this party, you know, regular party, and basically one thing led to another, and I ended up dying at this party. Um, I had a seizure in the kitchen. So from other people's point of view, this is what happened. I'm in the kitchen, I have a seizure. Okay, I'm down on the ground, People are surrounding me, and everyone's saying, oh my gosh, like, is she dead? Is she dead? That's what their version was. I didn't see that version. Um, well, I did kind of, I'll tell you. My version of what happened was I was standing in the hallway, and I saw, you know, yellow, yellow caution tape right in the kitchen. So I look. And I'm like, what is going on? Why is there yellow caution tape? So I walk down the hall into the kitchen and I see like this big group of people standing there and then they're all in a circle. I'm like, what are they, what are they looking at? Like, what's going on? So I look down into the circle and I'm at a party. I'm supposed to be, you know, having a good time, but like there's now caution tape and I'm like, what is going on? I look down into the circle and I'm in the middle of the circle and everybody's staring at me and my body is laying on the ground. And then I am like, whoa. So I try to like maybe communicate with people or no one can really hear me. I look down, my body's not there. Like I have no body. And I'm just like, what is going on? You know, like this is just crazy. So like, I'm kind of scared. Well, not scared, but I'm like, okay. I like, obviously I died. You know, I just knew at that moment, like nobody can hear me. I'm not supposed to be here anymore. So in that second, I realized, okay, I'm dead. I look up. All of a sudden, in the kitchen, I see this, like, huge white light coming from the ceiling to the floor. And it's just like, boom. And it's right there. And I just knew, like, okay, that's home. Like, that's where I'm supposed to go. So I obviously, I had no really else to go. No one was talking to me. I had no body, so I just, like, naturally moved into the light. So I went into the light. And uh, as I was moving up in the light, I just started to feel so good you know like I can't words can't explain it like the higher that I went into the light and the more that I moved up and further away from earth the better I felt and the feeling of pleasure does not really apply to this earth like um nothing can compare like if you took everything that you were in favor of like maybe getting a massage and a hot tub um your favorite music uh your favorite food your favorite drink everything that you love happening to you all at once no matter what it is all at once it would not even closely compare to the pleasure that was just within that light and as you moved further into like further away from this earth um the pleasure felt even better so you just moved up it felt better and better it was insane so anyways as as i'm moving like as i'm going up into the light like you could just tell you're moving up i look to my side and like the dark was disappearing so as i look to the side like the earth turned into blackness so the earth kind of turned into black matter and um, like all the objects and everything just kind of turned into this dark blackness and then all of a sudden as you're moving up into the light which is white right whitish light um the black starts disappearing so all the black goes away because the light's taking it and then the craziest thing was when i looked behind me like all the way behind me from where i came from i saw earth and earth was like it would be like you standing up, 
and looking down and seeing like an ant on the ground. Like our entire universe was the size of an ant. Like it just made you realize how insignificant this life is. And uh, you know, we're only on this earth for a short period of time, but after this period of time, there's an eternal life that we have to live. And I don't think many people know that, you know, or many people believe it. I mean, I wasn't really sure. I didn't really like 100% maybe believe it before this happened. And then after this happened, I was like, well, you know, there is a place you go. And um, yeah, it's just, it's important for people to know that. So anyways, um, I, I saw this and then it disappeared. So now I'm completely up in this light and um, I'm just... I see my whole life like flash before my eyes and I feel like amazing. <laughs> I don't go any further, it's just light. But I saw my whole life like flash before my eyes. Every person I knew, every thing I experienced, like I don't know how it happened that fast, but I got to see my entire life all at once. And I honestly looked at my life and I felt like a complete failure. I felt like I had lived one big selfish life which was only directed to myself. And I never helped anybody on this planet or I never gave anything. Like, I'm into it a substantial amount. Like, really, I just felt like I lived a life that was, I guess now now I know the terminology, but like worldly, you know? Um, so that kind of like, it was weird because, you know, there is there was that one disappointment up there. So that was kind of strange. Um, just to look at my whole life, like, that seems so big on earth, like, it, it, my life was so important, you know, it, my friends, my clothes, like, all this stuff was, like, huge priority here, and then when you get up there, you look at it, and you're like, you just, it's kind of funny, because you realize how small this planet is, and how insignificant, like, your big life really is, it's just funny. Um, but anyways, moving past this point, so... What happened was, um, as I looked through my life, another thing happened. Uh, my dog at that time popped out of, like, it almost looked like, um, you know, Mac computer, similar to Mac computer, where, like, everything flashes, like, ch -ch -ch -ch. it kind of looked like that. So everything's, like, flashing. And, sorry, that's my dog drinking water. Um, and he's still drinking water. Um, everything flashed before my eyes. And then um, my dog popped out, okay? My dog popped out, and then this girl popped out, and like this over, like I already felt so much love, but this overwhelming feeling of like love when I looked at my dog, it wasn't really a picture, it was just like my dog kind of, and then this girl, these overwhelming feelings of love came to me, and this girl was a friend, she was really close with me, and um, yeah. So, and my dog I cared about so much, so I really cared about these things. I felt like maybe I had, like I couldn't just leave these behind. So what I said was, um, just it naturally came out, like I didn't have a body at that time. So it came through my mind, like I spoke through my mind, um, just like when you talk to yourself in your head, but it was like the only thing I could hear, it was like amplified. So it would be louder than my voice talking through my mouth, but through my mind, amplified. It was really weird. And then, um, so I basically said, I'm not ready to go. Yeah, I said, I'm not ready, ready to go. And then um, this voice, which was God, you, you just know, it's like this very familiar voice that almost to me, what it sounded like was like the tone of everybody else's voice. It was like, this is the voice almost, and then every each of us have like a different pitch, lower or higher. And like, this was like the voice for all. And we, we all have like voices stemming off this voice. It was, that's kind of what, it was so familiar to me. You know, and uh, I can't get over it. But um, the next thing too, is when I said, I'm not ready to leave, or I'm not ready to go, or whatever. Even though I wanted to be up there, I just couldn't leave behind my life at that time. So the voice said to me, if you want to live, show it. And then the minute I said, okay, boom, it was like, 
back out of the light, like back into darkness coming past me, back into my body. And then I'm just like, I wake up and um, I'm laying on the kitchen floor, you know, and all I can see is red, like everywhere. Like all I see is just like red everywhere. And like all these people are around me and I'm like just coming to and all these people are, you know, are you okay? Are you okay? Oh my gosh, we thought you were dead. Like they're all concerned about me. And I just see red everywhere. And I think like, I just remember asking them like, um, am I bleeding? Like, I thought I broke my armor. I thought I was bleeding. I could see blood everywhere. I just saw red all over. And I'm like, am I bleeding? Like what's going on? And they're like, no, you're not bleeding. Are you okay? I'm like, yeah. And then all of a sudden the red went away. And, um, and that, yeah. And I just like, there's a strobe light. And that was the thing that gave me the seizure in the first place. So I see the strobe light like, bumping and I just like take it and I rip it out of the wall, <laughs> like threw it across the room. Um, and I think people were, you know, trying to grab me and pick me up or help me up. And I just didn't really understand and pinch and everything. Like, oh, I'm back on this earth. Like, what's going on? Throw the show. Like, uh, the lights were off. It was a party. I turned on the lights, you know, and I was, it was just no, you know, great. You know, when you're up there, there's nothing. I mean, I could sit here and my clothes right now are kind of uncomfortable. Um, my hair is kind of in my face. Like, I don't want to be negative, but the reality is that it's not perfect on Earth. And there is a place where none of this exists. Um, I mean, like, my leg might be sore right now. I might have to adjust my seating because, you know, we get uncomfortable at times. Um, my throat is kind of dry. I mean, I can go on. Just everything, like... The light might be too bright in this eye. I have to be wearing sunglasses. You know, this sounds really stupid, but the fact of the matter is, you know, light here, there is darkness here, and there is no perfection here. And to actually be able to believe or to know that there is a place where there is only good and there is no bad there, it almost doesn't really make sense. It doesn't, like to us, it doesn't because we. We're from this earth, and on this earth we have good and we have evil. And the hard thing to realize is, beyond this earth, there is a place of all good, and there is a place of all evil. And when we come to realize that, I think that's really important to help us get through this life. Um, because we're only here for a small time. And so... Say I die at 70, if the world lasts that long, who knows, <laughs> you know? But if I died at maybe 70, 80, that's less than 50 years left on this planet. And then I have eternity somewhere else. So just keep that in mind. If Even if you want to, like, for the simplicity of human beings, um, pretend we only live a thousand years, which I know we don't, but pretend just for simplicity. If we're going to be thinking about, like, 50 fun years here, which I mean my whole life before was just Let's just say I was not part of the good crowd. <laughs> I was part of the bad kids, you know partying all the time Not bad kids, but just you know get into trouble, you know doing anything I wanted um, uh, Really be doing like now I've learned these technical words, but doing like worldly things, you know, and uh, I just realized that there's so much more to this planet than just that, you know. And uh, I'm grateful that God gave me the experience to be able to tell you guys this. But I'm not really a person who likes to share these things, you know. If it was my way, I wouldn't say this at all. Like, I would actually just avoid this entire thing. And I wasn't going to tell anybody. I told people close to me. I'm kind of shy that way. I don't really need to share things with well, the entire world, for that matter. Um, but I just felt like this was a story that could help maybe even one person. Like, hopefully, one, at least one, realize that there is life beyond this life. And it's important that we realize that, pretend we even live a thousand years, we live more than that, but for simplicity, that the 50 or so years that we live on this planet, the 50 or so years... 70 years that we live on this planet 
is not worth eternity in somewhere that we do not belong. We belong in that beautiful place where we came from with God and uh, doing things that we deserve to do. And well, if, if our actions are right and stuff, but you know, we are born to come back home and it is this feeling of home. When you go, when, when I went there, it was just like, I was home. You know, I didn't want to even come back. Well, I felt the need to, but I didn't want to.